السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قناة الحكمة الساحرة قناة ثقافية ترفيهية اجتماعية And mapping the human genome has given us a blueprint for human life. Today, 3D printing technology is finding a host of medical applications. 3D printing can help medical application in saving time or risk, or make the patient life easier or more comfortable. We actually use the technology to really create a custom-made jacket, which would help the little girl to recover moving arms. Printing has simplified the customization of complex devices for a range of medical uses. So when you think about uh, cranial fractures, you can use 3D printing as a tool to do the uh, dry run for the surgeon without having to uh, make the patient suffer or take any risk in the operations. And now the technology is being used to create more complex structures. What we're talking about doing here is trying to make um, liver cells as an alternative to getting them from cadavers. We're trying to print them together on a scaffold to create little mini livers that could be a model for a liver for drug discovery. But going on from that, being able to create mini livers that one could put in and then take out of the body readily for purposes of helping uh, address acute liver failure. We are going to live in an age where there would be simple organs off the shelf available for the health service to provide. If we want to go beyond that and try to create kidneys, hearts, then I think it's going to be even longer. Three D printing is not a dream. It is not a toy, and it hasn't been invented two weeks ago. In fact. It is already a production technology. 3D printing has, an, has a big impact on a lot of markets, especially for the medical sector. But can 3D printing really be the rebirth of current medical practice? Well, medical practice has changed a lot over the years. And let me show this to you. This is a picture of how our operating theater actually looked like 100 years ago. Exactly, 100 years ago. And well, what you can see on this picture is that the surgeons are operating on the patient amongst the classroom with other students. And what you can notice as well is that, well, everybody or nobody is working, is wearing actually a mask or wearing gloves. Um, so it's not a very sterile environment like we sh would know it today. And what you can notice as well is that there's very few and, well, nearly no technology involved at all. This is how an operating theater actually looked like today. It's one of the pictures I took from, from Google. It's actually a German operating theater. And what you can see there is, well, today there's a lot of technology involved. And, well, more or less, um, if you've been there already, uh, from well, work or as a patient uh, yourself, well, you would have noticed that there's a limited amount of staff, actually. One, maximum two surgeons, an anesthesiologist, a couple of nurses, m maximum two, maybe a technician, but that's it, and maybe an intern, of course. And there are nearly more screens than medical staff, actually, today. And over the years, well, new technology has been introduced to operating theater and in the medical practice. And, well, surgeons and doctors have already, well, always been very careful ab about introducing a new technology. And with 3D printing, well, a lot of is happening, and we will sh see this together uh, during my presentation. Uh, but the future actually might look like this. And what you can see here on this picture, well, it would be actually one surgeon with his patient, no other staff, and one 3D printer. And um, what you can see as well is that, well, there's something happening with a 3D printer. It's a bit like you would know with your home printer, your paper printer, actually. 
where there are two papers being, well, printed. Another example is as well that 3D printing for the medical practice has enabled the, well, uh, the reducing of the surgery time. And one example here, very powerful, is to show you that in the past, in 2001 and 2002, so it's not a technology that has been invented two weeks ago, surgery time has been reduced from 97 to 23 hours. And this is amazing, actually. If we have a look at this case study, those little CME students here are binded to, uh, to one another by their skull. And um, while, of course, we would like to separate them and um, to give them a healthier life as well and maintain them alive as well. And as you would imagine, this is a very highly complex procedure. And such a procedure is actually very rare, so it doesn't happen and occur very often. And when surgeons are confronted with this case, well, they have either to improvise or work 97 hours straight in order to, well, bring a solution to this case. So what 3D printing did here is to help to reduce the surgery time and to bring an easier solution for the surgeons here as well. So as you can see, the, the problem here was not only that their skull was binding together, but as well the veins bringing the, uh, the blood here uh, were merged together. So in order to separate them, while well, surgeons had to decide what tools to use, where to cut, and how to cut. And being able to rehearse the procedure before the operation, well, this was a real game changer for this case study. And this is an example of, um, well, what has been 3D printed. Uh, it's a, a patient uh, model here of, of the skull. And you see that there are two different colors, actually. So one, the, the translucent and white one is more the, the skull, the, the anatomy. And the blood vessels in right here are represented as well. And this model enabled the surgeons to rehearse the operation before the surgical act. In 2009, Royal College of Art student Jorge Lope de Santos created several 3D printed works of art from pediatric 3D scans. Since that time, ultrasound, MRI and CT data has increasingly been used by doctors to make medical models that assist in the planning and practice of surgery. Here, for example, is a pelvic model by Cavendish Imaging that was laser centered in nylon from CT scan data. Over in Japan, a company called Facetec have developed a process called biotexture modeling. This uses material jetting to make 3D prints that simulate the wetness and texture of human organs. Models like this liver 3D printed by Maki Sugimoto actually feel organic to the touch and allow a surgeon to see scar tissue and cancers inside an organ. They can also be dissected to practice an operation before cutting into patient flesh. 3D printed medical models can also assist in the fabrication of custom prosthetics. Here, for example, is a 3D printed scan of patient Eric Moga who lost part of his face due to cancer. This printout was created by a dental surgeon called Andrew Daywood, who used it to make a flexible mask that allows Eric to eat and drink in a normal fashion. An increasing number of people wear external prosthesis manufactured in whole or part by 3D printers. These include prosthetic legs with 3D printed fairings, as well as 3D printed foot shells and customised artificial limb components. Just one pioneer is artist turned prosthetics designer Thomas Most, who has found a cutting edge medical application for his digital sculpting skills. Other medical 3D printing innovators include Arkham and the Adler Ortho Group, who since 2006 have been using electron beam melting to produce medical implants such as this ace tabular cup. This is the top part of an artificial hip that attaches to a patient's pelvis and is custom 3D printed in titanium. As you can see, the cup has a unique porous surface structure that could not be fabricated using traditional manufacturing methods. This unique surface provides the best long-term fixation as the patient's bone actually grows into it. Entering the mainstream, 3D printing is rapidly facilitating digital dentistry. 
Strategists, for example, have developed a range of 3D printers that can create wax-ups using its wax deposition modeling technology, as well as orthodontic appliances, trillions, and surgical guides using its polyjet material jetting process. The latter produces very high-resolution smooth surface prints that can be color matched to make highly realistic veneer models. Other dental 3D printing pioneers include 3D Systems and Envision Tech, who make printers that assist in the production of aligners, drill guides, bridges, crowns, and temporary teeth. The latter, according to the Harvard Business Review, in the United States it took less than 500 days for every single company that produces custom hearing aid shells to switch from traditional methods to 3D printing. All of the innovations I've discussed so far involve the 3D printout of inorganic models or prosthesis. However, in the future, bioprinting will facilitate the 3D printout of organic tissue. Here, bioink spheroids, each containing tens of thousands of living cells, will be 3D printed into layers of a protective material, and after printout, will rearrange and fuse into functional tissue for human transplantation. The images you're currently looking at are my own fictional creation. But already, pioneers including Organovo have managed to bioprint sections of cardiac muscle, human arteries and nerve grafts. In November 2014, Organovo even started selling bioprinted human liver tissue as a commercial product for use in drug testing. In May 2015, it then signed an agreement with L'Oreal to develop bioprinted human skin. And then, in November 2015, Russian pioneers 3D bioprinting solutions even successfully transplanted into a mouse a functional 3D printed thyroid. It's now four years since I first created my future vision of a bioprinter and uploaded it to YouTube. Since that time, medical 3D printing has advanced significantly, with a market predicted to be worth nearly a billion dollars by 2019. All of us with an interest in 3D printing should therefore keep a close eye on the medical sector. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again. Fine, and what we want to see is trying to be less dependent on organ donations. So with 3D printing, the capability is to be able to generate Organs which are acceptable to the recipient are much larger, but we're not there yet. But we are moving towards that direction. Really, printing in healthcare could be defined with two different applications. One is from the model's perspective, basically models that you can literally print into a particular shape and then adjust to the patient. We have certain examples where we see that already starting. So the dental industry sees the, the printing of crowns and invisible type of braces that could be printed for the customer in the office. And the reason why this is a method that is fairly economical, especially for the patient, is that you do a scanning of the impressions of the patient and then are able to modify in an electronic file what you would like those final state of the teeth to be. And then you're able to replicate multiples of them in one platform. And then there are less visits to the dentist. In using 3D printing for prosthetics, they help from the perspective of being customized and fitted to the stump where the former limp was located and they're made out of off-the-shelf polymers so they're not too expensive. From that perspective, it's also cost-minimizing in comparison to traditional prosthetics. For example, in the use in pediatrics, the patients are in constant growth and the cost associated with that fitting will be lower. It also will be a rapid turnaround in comparison with traditional fitting of prosthetics. The second application is bioprinting. The tissue engineering market 
in relation to 3D printing or bioprinting is expected to have approximately 32% growth in the next few years. The main difference associated with a bioprinting operation and a 3D printing operation is the use of bioink which is artificial or it could be natural materials and the mixture of those with cells. And when we say artificial, think about polymers, plastics, and natural could be lactic acid proteins. From the perspective of, of drug testing, bioprinting could offer flexibility in terms of cost efficiency. And what I mean by cost efficiency is animal testing. Animal testing is fairly costly and does not replicate what the interactions of the drugs will be with the human. So having a platform with 3D printing where we're able to replicate what the human tissue would be provide us, one, repeatability for the drug testing, two, lesser costs associated with the drug testing. A lot of studies start with mice or rats, but then to be able to prove that it's truly efficient, you have to go with larger animals and you have to take care of them during the process of drug testing and it's costly. It المرضى الصينيين ففي بلد يمنع فيه زرع الأعضاء باستثناء تبرع الأبوين والأقارب تشكل طابعة بيولوجية ثلاثية الأبعاد مستقبل الطب التجديدي الطابعة التي أطلق عليها اسم ريجونوفو تصنع أعضاء بشرية من خلايا من مادة هلامية وقد توصل فريق من الباحثين الصينيين في جامعة هانغزو للعلوم والتكنولوجيا إلى صنع كلية ثلاثية الأبعاد لكنها تفتقر إلى الأعصاب والأوعية الدموية في الوقت الحالي المواد التي نستخدمها تنتمي إلى نوع من الهيدروجيل الذي يشبه الجيلاتين أو الكولاجين ويملك خصائص فيزيائية تشبه الأعضاء البشرية ما تقوم به الطابعة أنها تبني الخلايا وترتبها بالشكل المناسب تماما كبناء جدار من الطوب إنها عملية دقيقة الابتكار الصيني ليس الأول من نوعه فالباحثون في الولايات المتحدة متقدمون في هذا المجال لكن يبقى التحدي الأكبر هو العثور على طريقة لهندسة الأعضاء المطبوعة بحيث يقبلها الجسم ربما تحتاج الطابعات الثلاثية الأبعاد من 15 إلى 20 عاما قبل أن تصنع أعضاء أكثر تعقيدا وأعتقد أن الأبحاث المتعلقة بالخلايا الجذعية ستساعد في تطوير هذه التقنية ويرى الباحثون الصينيون أن نجاحهم لن يفيد الصينيين فقط بل سيشكل ثورة في عالم الطب الحيوي والتجددي في أنحاء العالم